And Brooke, and we add in Mike Tannenbaum to join the conversation. And Brooke, what, what are players saying about this competitive part of Brady? Because it looked like he was out for good, and then he came back so quickly, and it seems like this is why. I mean, there are so many signature Brady competitive moments, but my mind immediately goes to the 2020 Super Bowl when he just absolutely got inside Tyron Matthews' head. There's, I mean, Tyron Matthews is a great trash talker. Brady's a great, a great trash talker. And he single-handedly won that one. I mean, talking with Mike Evans afterward, Mike Evans said, yeah, we love that. Like, all of us, we, we all kind of got rallied up because of that, because of that competitive fire. Brady, clearly, he is motivated by that kind of drive. I think that, that that's something that really does drive him. He's not going to find something away from football that satiates that competitive fire. We're not going to see him doing celebrity boxing. Golf doesn't quite cut it, so he's got to keep going back to the well, keep playing football till the wheels come off. Celebrity boxing, Tom Brady. I would, super, <laughs> I would love to see that. Please make that happen, someone. Mike Tannenbaum, what do you think about Tom Brady's uh, comments here? And not only that, how long he continues playing. Yeah, I really agree with what Brooks said. I think he's close to the end, but he is a world-class competitor. And unfortunately, I have about two decades worth of scar tissue between the Jets <laughs> and the Dolphins. And, you know, the times we had success against him, it was just trying to hit him. We try to make him uncomfortable, but he would chase down interceptions, fumble recoveries. This guy is a world-class competitor. And there's his guy, Rob Gronkowski, that'll be active by November 1st, who will come out oh. of retirement like a lot of people do to play with Tom Brady. So there's no doubt that they have a great chance to win it. And that's what he is. He is a world-class competitor that makes everybody else around him better. And that's why last year, Ryan, in particular, we saw all those former Patriots want to play with him because they, he makes it fun, he makes it competitive, and it's a great environment to thrive in if you're a player. Wait, you dropped a little nugget in there. You think Gronk's coming back by midseason, you say? <laughs> Ryan, 100 percent. Ask Chris Canny what veteran wants to go to training camp. And there's no chance that when Tom Brady calls him up after Halloween and says, Gronk, we need you 20 plays a game, third down in red zone, whatever they you want, they'll pay you. He's not going to say no to that. Wow. Okay. Let's see how that plays out. Canty, what, what do you think? When you talk Mike about T's not wrong. I mean, playing 20 games is a lot. Playing 8 to 10 games, that's a different story. So I could absolutely see a world where, and Gronk, no training camp. where Gronk comes back right around the Tampa Bay Buccaneers bye week, which is around Thanksgiving. It's week 11, so it's a perfectly positioned bye week to get Gronk reacclimated. But guys... I mean, there is no timeline on Tom Brady retiring. Think about this. The guy stepped away from football for a month and a half, and I think it's safe to say that the daddy daycare didn't go well when he did that. <laughs> and so the reality is that he's playing the best football of his career. This has been the best two-year span of his career down in Tampa. Think about it. 10,000 yards passing. You're talking about 83 touchdowns to 24 interceptions. Mm. He is at the height of his powers. And anybody that's any good at anything, why would you want to walk away when you're that good? So I don't, I don't necessarily see this as Tom Brady's swan song his last year, his last dance. I think we could be talking about Tom Brady playing several more seasons. And what Tampa has done in terms of rebuilding that offensive line after the retirement of Ali Marpet and Alex Kappel leaving in free agency. They yeah. Let me tell you something, Ryan. I've seen some toxic offer sheets in my career, and this was not one of them. This was a very clean offer sheet, and it was an easy match for the Suns. No player option. No trade bonus, no shenanigans with the pay schedule. This was the Pacers putting them to the test, saying, are you really going to stop doing this to, to try to maintain the KD sweepstakes? The answer was no, we're keeping him. They matched it literally in minutes. Big day for DeAndre Ayton. What does it mean for Donovan Mitchell? It means Donovan Mitchell's chances of becoming a Nick just increased. They were already the favorites, but there were scenarios where Donovan Mitchell could be involved in three and 14 trades to get him to Brooklyn, who was looking for a young star in return for Kevin Durant. This is a young star, just 25 years old. The Knicks are in position. Will they meet Utah's price? That's what we're going to be watching very closely in the coming days. There's action on Donovan Mitchell. As for Kevin Durant, here's what there is. Nothing. There is no movement here. <laughs> the executives are leaving Summer League. The executives are going on vacation. At this point, the Nets' preferred situation is for Kevin Durant to, to stay with them. There is no trade that they've got that they like. The huge question, and what we, the league in some ways is waiting for, is what does Durant feel? He was the one who asked for the trade, Ryan. Does his, has his feelings changed with some of the avenues for trades dimming?
Wow, that's the big question. And by the way, when you talk about him possibly staying there, Hall of Famer Jerry West thinks that might be the case. He was on Sirius XM NBA radio. He gave his thoughts on Kevin Durant's trade request. Remember, they go way back. He knew him in Golden State, all of that. Take a listen to what he had to say. And for him to want out, um, I can see why. I can see why. Wherever he goes, or to my best guess, he will be in, he's not going to get traded. You can't give enough to get a guy like him. He's right. one of the greatest players ever played the game, period. See, I think that's such an interesting point right there because the idea being he is worth so much, it's going to be hard for, to, for them to move on from him, and it's going to be hard for him to move. So, Nick Friedel, I'll start with you. Do the Nets run it back with KD and Kyrie? Ryan, they'd love to run it back with Kevin. Where I get stuck, having been around that team the last few months and, and, and watched all the destruction that occurred behind the scenes, is whether or not they would run it back with Kyrie. That's where I think the Nets have an issue, and this ties exactly into what Brian was saying. The question here is twofold. One, would Durant actually come back to Brooklyn? Two, would he come back to Brooklyn without Kyrie? That is what only he knows right now, and at some point he's going to have to convey to the Nets. If he would, I think that's Brooklyn's dream scenario to start the season because Sean Marks talked about the culture they want to grab back. If you deal Kyrie to L.A. or anywhere else and you start the season with Kevin Durant, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Joe Harris, and that strong core that's in place, you've got a chance. But I have a tough time believing that Kevin and Kyrie will be there to start next season. Okay. And, Canty, we brought you in here because we wanted to you're, – you're big in the New York market. Yep. You know these teams. So when you look at this situation, do you see this happening, the two of them coming back, or do you think it's better off if maybe Kyrie's out? Man, they're coming back. They, they don't have any choice. The Brooklyn Nets have all the leverage in the world in this situation, and I get it. The NBA is star-driven, and stars typically get what they want when they ask to be traded. But stars don't usually have four years remaining on their contract. And if everybody that's, that knows Kevin Durant, that covers Kevin Durant, says this guy loves the hoop, there's no chance that he's going to sit out this season. He's 34 years old and at the height of his powers. So the Brooklyn Nets, if they can't find the deal that's going to net them the return that they're looking for in order to rebuild this team quickly to sus have sustained winning, then Kevin Durant is going to be on the squad. And Kevin Durant was always going to be the first of the two big players in Brooklyn moved. And because they can't necessarily find that match, Phoenix now off the market, at least for the time being because of the Aiton signing, I could see a world where KD and Kyrie decide, at least for the beginning of the season, we're going to play in Brooklyn. So I like where this is going. Nick saying he can't imagine Kyrie coming back. You're saying both of them come back. Wendy, settle it for us. How do you think this plays out? Because, look, I don't even know if KD is going to now, now say it's contingent on Kyrie staying or he needs to go because I want to – if I stay. Ryan, as you can imagine, I spend a lot of time each day talking to people all over the league about this exact situation. And here's what I've gotten to. I'm not going to make an assumption on anything about Kevin Durant. And I wish I could give a firmer, uh, more well-rounded answer here. But I'm not going to assume how he's going to feel, how he has felt. It isn't 100% clear to me. It might not even be 100% clear to the Nets exactly why he asked out. And so I am not going to try to guess at where his emotions and his feelings are. But what I can tell you is that's what it's going to come down to. I understand what Canty is saying. The Nets contractually have the advantage, but ultimately it's a players-driven league where the player gets to decide, and we have seen it over and over and over again, the contract is secondary when you have the clout. Yeah, the ultimate leverage he has is saying, look, I'm not coming in until you do something, and then that changes everything. But again, we don't know where KD stands, so that's what everybody's looking for. Okay, so from the current Nets to a former Net, after a disappointing season in Philly, James Harden spoke with Hot Time, did I say that right? Hate Time, Hot Time, about how he is using the offseason to get back to an elite level. Take a listen to this. He says, I've had the luxury of not having to deal with any serious injuries with surgeries and whatnot my entire career. But these last two years, I've been dealing with some hamstring issues, which are nothing to play with. So I'm taking this summer as an opportunity to do something for me, to make sure I get back to the elite level that I know I can be at and that I will be at. 
music to the ears of Sixers fans like me. And, and Wendy, <laughs> I got to ask you, Harden, what is the latest?